One of the newest additions to help speed the parking of cars with a minimum amount of extra help is this closed circuit TV camera located behind the Health Science Building. With it, one parking attendant can efficiently operate two separate parking lots as he's able to see the cars arriving and by panning the camera is able to determine whether there is parking space available in that lot and where it is. Upon arriving, a driver is stopped by a gate which is operated with a special card issued to all those who are authorized to park in the area. The attendant in the other lot with the aid of a special two-way speaker can direct the driver to a parking area that is open, thus eliminating confusion and time lost when normally a driver is forced to drive around in search of a parking spot. To add to the problem of parking on the campus, further reduction of upper campus parking will have to go into effect shortly. With the ever-increasing enrollment, more students are on foot throughout the campus, and the danger of accidents from autos is greatly increased. This means that cars now allowed to park in these areas will eventually have to move to the already crowded lots on the lower campus. Why does the university charge for parking on the campus? This question is one that never fails to provoke a lively discussion from all those concerned. As mentioned earlier, over 55% of students bringing their cars are those who live in or around the greater Seattle area. These are the students who require the parking facilities. The university feels that it would be unfair for the resident who lives outside the greater Seattle area to have to pay through taxation for parking areas that do not serve him. Therefore, the parking facilities are set up to be self-supporting. All the money received from parking revenues goes into the university general operating fund and is used to pay the salaries of the parking attendants plus the hiring of extra help that is required during games and special university functions. Any revenue remaining after costs then goes into a special fund set aside to help pay for further expansion of parking facilities. What then is the answer to this ever-increasing problem? Three solutions appear possible. Number one, to develop a rapid transportation system allowing students in King County and its outlying areas to leave their cars at home. Number two, acquisition of additional land on which to further expand the parking area, or three, the building of multiple parking structures which would allow more cars to park in a given area. At this time, the university has a special fact-finding committee studying the problem in conjunction with a firm of consulting engineers. We hope to be able to announce the recommendations of the committee in a later basketball telecast.